Hi, my name is Autumn. I'm from Automaker's Many Pet Pigs. Welcome to my weekly Q&A where I answer all the questions that I've collected this week um, and I'm just going to get right into it, okay? First question, do pigs mohawks stand up when they're angry or intimidated like a dog's does? And the answer is yes and no. Um, a pig's mohawk stands up when they're Yes, when they're angry, they're intimidated, they're scared, um, they're grumpy, they're annoyed, whatever it may be. But they also stand up when they're happy or maybe you're giving them a good scratch on the side of the belly and that mohawk goes up, it lets you know that that feels good. So the way to be able to distinguish between the two is by just looking at the surroundings. Um, is your pig getting a belly rub? Well then, that mohawk is up because something feels good. Um, is, is there a dog barking in the neighborhood? Is there someone new in your home? Did you startle your pig? Um, is your pig annoyed about something? Uh, for those, if the mohawk goes up, that is kind of a warning to you that something is not right. So you need to assess the situation and figure out what's wrong. Second question. I've heard that pig, a pig has a hole in their foot that secretes mucus. Is that true? Pigs have on the backs of their front legs, they have like four or five little holes. And what those little holes are, are their scent glands. So, you know, pigs, pigs, a male pig that's not fixed is going to rub his scent onto his surroundings to kind of claim his property or so to speak. Um, a female also has scent glands and she too will rub it like on her, um, her bedding and things like that. Now, when a pig, a pig is fixed early, those scent glands, a lot of times they don't develop fully, but they still do secrete some kind of uh, a liquid. Um, and there's nothing, you know, it doesn't really smell bad or anything like that. Nothing like a cat or a dog that would spray something. Um, it's different. It's just, it secretes drops at a time. It, it would never like spray on anything. So, and they do have scent glands um, throughout their body in different places. Um, but the ones on the back of their legs, that you, really you don't notice them, especially like on a pig that's dark, you don't really notice them. Uh, if you have a pig that's lighter or you feel on the backs of your pig's leg, front legs and they feel weird, like there's a bump there, sometimes those scent glands can kind of get like a, not infected, but they kind of get almost like a pimple type of a thing um, that can be kind of scraped out. Um, a lot of people like to do that. I don't really mess with Topangas at all. If you if you try to scrape at them or pick at them too much, it can cause them to abscess. So I don't mess with hers at all. So I would say it's good to just check them, maybe when they're laying on your lap or on the floor and they're getting a belly rub, just to check them out and make sure that they look okay. If they ever seem hot to the touch or maybe all red and you haven't really been picking at them or anything, um, maybe your pig feels warm, like could have a fever, I would call the vet and just get it checked out because they could have a little bit of, uh, like I said, like a little abscess or something there. So I would check it out for sure. Okay, next question. Do pigs get along with dogs? This is a loaded question. Um, pigs and pigs are prey animals. Dogs are predators. So when it comes to pigs and dogs together, you have to be really careful. It depends on both animal and it depends on how they react to each other. If you have a dog that chases squirrels or rabbits, um, I would say that a pig is probably not the right pet to add to your family at this time. Um, if you have a pig that is aggressive towards other animals, some pigs are just more bossy than others and they just like to be in charge. Um, I would say that you might want to be careful before you get a puppy. Just things like that. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel that discusses pigs and dogs. I did uh, a discussion with 
my sister-in-law who was a dog trainer and we kind of just talked about pigs and dogs and how they are together, the differences in the two, um, maybe when they do well together and when they don't. I would definitely check out that video and if you have any more questions, let me know. There was a second part to that question. Should, uh, if I add pigs or dogs to my family together, should they both be female or male or doesn't it matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all personality. Um, and if you get a piglet from me and if you have a pig in the house, it should be fixed. All my piglets leave me fixed, but if you get a piglet from somebody else, it should be fixed. Um, pigs that are not fixed do not make good house pets. So definitely watch that video and you will um, probably get a better understanding than I can just talk in this video in a minute. Next question. What might another ethical breeder not do that I do? There's a lot of things, you know, just, I am not the only ethical breeder that breeds mini pigs. I know there are more out there. I know of two that I can think of that are good breeders. They have good breeding practices. They love their animals. They treat them well. They have them in a good um, area that's kept clean. Um, that is important. Not everybody does what I do. So I, I bring the mothers in the house to give birth, which means that the mothers and her babies stay in my house. They have an area in our basement that is kept clean and sanitary. Um, so not everybody brings their pigs in the house to be raised, their piglets either. A lot of breeders will bring them in um, after they're weaned from their mother, so maybe like two weeks or so. And then they that's when they begin doing things like litter box training, um, socializing, that kind of a thing. I've gotten pigs from those kinds of breeders, and like I said, it doesn't mean they're unethical, but it didn't work for me because I thought I was getting a piglet that was litter box trained and was social, but really they'd only been doing it for two weeks. So no, it didn't work for me. I want a piglet that is social. I want a piglet that is litter box trained. So that's what I try to do with my piglets. Um, I also harness train and leash train all of our piglets. Uh, not everybody does that actually. Very, very few do that. And you know, it doesn't make them bad breeders. It just, it takes a lot of time. It takes money. You know, I have to put up the money for these leashes and these harnesses, and it takes a lot of my time to teach these little animals that they're safe on a leash and a harness. It's not easy, and that's why a lot of people don't do it. And that's okay. It doesn't make them bad breeders. It just means that you're going to have to do that when you get your piglet. Um, also, I crate train all of our piglets, um, very few. I don't know of any, I could be wrong, but I don't know of any personally that crate train their piglets. And the reason I do it is because if I, my piglets are going to have to leave me somehow, you know, they're going to have to either drive in a car, could be an hour, could be several hours. I mean, we've driven with piglets for, uh, four, six hours, three hours. Um, people have come from seven hours away. So think about it, if you have a piglet that you're gonna have to drive home, I've picked up a piglet that wasn't crate trained. I've picked up a piglet that was in a car once to go to the vet and wants to come go back to their house. And when I picked that piglet up, it was petrified of that crate and of being in a moving vehicle. It was probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had with a pig and it was an hour drive home. It was it was horrible, horrible. So <laughs> I crate train because I want the ride home to be calm and not stressful. Some of my piglets fly. The furthest they've flown so far is to California. They were in their crate for close to 12 hours. But because I crate train them, being in that crate was no problem. They were comfortable, they were cozy, they were not stressed out. They may have been stressed out because of the things around them. Maybe on a plane there was a barking dog or something like that. But in their crate, they feel safe. And that's why I do it. 
I feel it's one of the things I think is most important for our piglets. So just because other breeders don't do that doesn't mean they're not ethical. That's all I can think of right off the top of my head. And you know, social, like our piglets are so social, but it doesn't mean that if they're not social that the piglet, that the breeder was unethical, you know? It just means they're busy, it's hard work. And not everybody, this is their only job. Like this is my job, this is what I do. I run this business and we take care of all of our animals. Fortunately, I have my two boys to help me and they're a huge help. Let's move on to the next question. I have a lot of allergies to dogs and cats. Are pigs hypoallergenic? So we too have this issue. Um, one of my sons is allergic to cats. I'm allergic to cats and dogs. JP, we think he's allergic to cats, but it hasn't been confirmed. Um, we don't have any problems with pigs. And, and I'm also allergic to horses, pretty much any animal with fur that has dander. And when people are allergic to animals, it's not that they're allergic to the animal, they're allergic to, a lot of times, they're allergic to the saliva because they clean themselves, and then the fur, and that saliva turns into like a dander on their fur, and you know, it makes us sneeze, or it makes us get a rash, or things like that. So, I would say, as far as pigs are concerned, probably 90 to 95% of the time, people that are allergic to cats and dogs and horses and all that are okay around a pig. Because pigs do not have fur, they have hair that is bristly, they do not clean themselves, so they don't have that saliva, that dander thing. Pigs are more like our kinds of skin with a bristly hair. So I would say, I, I could never say 100% pigs are hypoallergenic, but I do know for most people they are. They don't cause any kind of a reaction. Now, there are there is that small percent of people that yes, they have a pig, they may get a rash, or um, I think mostly, I can't think of any that I've ever read where people had allergies, like, um, a, a histamine response to a pig. I think most of the time, maybe you get a little bit of a rash. And I think it's for people who have extremely sensitive skin because that hair is bristly and kind of pokey. Um, I think that that's probably what it is. It's that hair rubbing on them that kind of causes a little bit of a rash. But if you're concerned and you live close, come visit. I mean, I have a pig in my house <laughs> at all times my pet upstairs, and then we have pigs in the basement. You can sit with them, you can hold them, you can touch them. We can see um, if you have a reaction, and if you do, then you know. If you don't, then you know that too. Now, if you live too far, I would say that there are rescues all over the United States. Probably, I would think all over the world, but I know all over the United States there are rescues. Visit a rescue, talk to them, see, what, see if, if you have any kind of a reaction when you touch them or um, when you're around them in their surroundings. That's the best I can do is say like probably 90 to 95%, yes, hypoallergenic, but there's always that small chance. Next question. What is your stance on weaning age and introducing food? Um, okay, so this is another really interesting fact about pigs. In the wild, I'm not talking about on a farm, I'm talking about in the wild. Pigs, mother pigs, nurse their babies for around 17, 15, 17 weeks. Okay, that's a long time for a mother to be nursing her babies. But think about it, in the wild, you know, pigs, pigs are prey animals always, but in the wild, pigs are foragers. Um, they are scavengers. So, she's not gonna be able to teach her babies to find their own, find enough food for quite some time. So, not that I think that pigs on a farm or pigs in a, a family setting need to be nursed that long, but when a baby pig is with its mother, they learn valuable life lessons. They learn how to be a pig, first of all. 
Um, she will teach them in the wild how to find food. Um, she will also teach them just when they're together. A mother pig potty trains her babies. If you've ever seen a piglet or had a piglet, raised a piglet that was not raised by its mother, they have major potty training issues. Really, really difficult time. We're seeing that with Cash. Cash, of course, if you know the story, he I had to take him from his mom because she kept trying to kill him. Um, but she would let him nurse if I would scratch her side. So for two weeks, every in the beginning, every hour, in the second week, it was every couple hours, I would have to scratch her side so that she could nurse. But after two weeks, she was done. She didn't want any more of it. Now he is several months old and he just has the worst time with potty training. He pees everywhere. He pees on blankets, he pees on the floor, he pees on stuffed animals, it, like toys, it doesn't matter. He pees on everything. And I do the same thing with him that I do with all my other pigs, nothing different. But he just can't get it, just can't get it. He wasn't with his mom long enough and I know that's what it was. So back to the question, my stance on weaning, I feel that a piglet should be with its mother for at least seven weeks. So I, I begin weaning the day our piglets turn seven weeks. And then what that means is I begin weaning. It means that that day she stays outside, the mother stays outside just a little bit longer. Whew. The next day, a little longer and then a little longer, and then a little longer, and then a little longer, so that by the time those piglets turn, the day they turn eight weeks old, they're totally weaned. Their mother doesn't come in that day. They only get food. So I really, I really, really feel strongly that a piglet should stay with its mother for as long as possible. Oh, and introducing food. Yes, I like for them to nurse for four weeks solely. They just get so chubby and fat and healthy. They get all the immunity from their mother. They get all those minerals and vitamins, everything. It's so important for them. So I don't introduce food until they're around four weeks old. And then I'm just supplement. I'm just getting them introduced. You know, I just let them taste it. Um, we put some dirt in it so they can get the vitamins and the minerals from the soil. Um, and we cover it with water so that they don't choke and it's not too dry. So I, I don't start feeding them meals until they're five weeks old and then they get meals, but they, they do not, um, they still nurse until they're seven weeks. And then that one week we're slowly weaning. And then by eight weeks, they're completely weaned. Do some people wean a piglet early to stunt their growth? Yes. They do. Um, a lot of people will take a piglet from its mother. They'll let it nurse initially, possibly a day, maybe two. But a lot of times they take that baby because the, like I said, the mother's milk is, it's magical and it makes them chubby and it makes them grow quickly. And it makes them, that's it, it makes them chubby. And people want a small pig people on a small pig. So yes, they'll take them from their mother and they'll put them on an elder food, an elder elderly pig food, which has very little fat. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Very little fat. And so they don't grow quickly. They grow very slowly and it tends to stump their growth a little bit. But also with those pigs, like I said, they might be a little smaller but they're not getting the immunity from their mother, so they could be sickly, pick up all kinds of things. They are going to have issues with potty training. If they don't, you're super lucky. And pigs that are taken from their mother tend to be spoiled, get, get like spoiled pig syndrome super easy because like I said, a mother pig keeps her babies in line. If you've ever seen my videos, of the mothers, they bat them all over the place because a pig doesn't have, you know, they, a pig never feels full. A piglet never feels full. So they want to nurse constantly and their mother has to 
keep them in line. You know, she's not a 24 hour buffet. She will nurse, she will take a break. She will nurse, she will take a break. And as they get older and they drain her very quickly, she needs to let that milk replenish. So she's not going to nurse them 24 hours a day. So she keeps them in line by, she keeps them from being bossy. She keeps them from being spoiled. She keeps them from being aggressive. So pigs that don't have that, they grow up to be spoiled, self-centered, which they already have that tendency anyways, but then they can have aggression issues on top of it. So uh, I would definitely say that it's probably one of the reasons that a lot of pigs are rehomed or surrendered because they were not kept with their mother and they, they just, they need to be, they need to be with their mother. Please don't support people who sell pigs at a week old, two weeks old, three weeks old, four weeks old, five weeks old. I know some breeders do sell at six weeks old, which I'm against that too, but at least they were kept with their mother for six weeks. I mean, it's better than nothing. Last question. If pigs are prey animals, why can some owners get close to them while they sleep and the pigs seem comfortable and content and they don't like move away? Um, pigs are prey animals, yes, they absolutely are. Now, the reason that some people can get close to their pig without it moving when it's sleeping is because the pig knows it's safe. They know their home, they know their family. Pigs are smart and they have a really good sense of smell. So if you approach your pig and it doesn't move or you think it's asleep, it can probably still smell you. <laughs> it can still smell you. They're super, super, super smart. Have a fantastic sense of smell. So the reason they don't move is because they're home, they're safe. Um, so I would say that's definitely the reason. They're comfortable, they're safe, they're content. All right, that was all my questions. Thank you guys so much for everybody who sent them to me. And don't forget, I'll be doing another one next week. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to always send them. And I hope everybody has a good day. Bye.